Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to yet another, indeed the final of the month, Shoutcraft Clan War right here on MLG TV. My name is Total Biscuit. Man, it's actually kind of late at night. I'm a little bit tired. Those of you who don't know, I actually went for a CT scan today, drank a bunch of this horrendous contrast fluid thing. I don't know what it's doing to my body. It feels strange, but I'm sure I'll be fine. So I'm kind of running on fumes at the moment. My apologies. I was up very, very early and well. Six hours of starving yourself and not drinking anything. Not great for the body, I tend to find. Uh, never mind, though, because we have StarCraft. And StarCraft's kind of great, especially when you have a lineup that looks like this. Kicking it off in a ZBZ on New Pompeii again. I mean, how many times have we seen ZBZ on this map? Very popular Zerg map indeed, New Pompeii, followed by Legend versus Super, which... If Legend wins that, I will be very impressed. Let me put it that way. That is that is a mismatch if I've ever seen one. So, I mean, Super is god tier. Legend, of course, number one GSL Observer. Not quite up to scratch when it comes to playing against top Korean pros. So, we'll see what happens there. After that, Hack versus Sniper and Curious versus Keen in the 2v2. That's going to be good. That's going to be great, actually. Absolutely fantastic. Then Hack versus Keen on Keru, classic matchup there. Pet versus Billowy on Neo Jungle Valley and SKS, aka Trickster. Old school as it gets, folks, from the original GSL, taking on Tails on New Polaris Rhapsody. All right, it's going to be a good one. I'm going to get right into this. So I'm going to check if everyone is ready. Hopefully they are. Looks like it. I've got Curious and Shine sitting in the lobby. Shine confirms ready. Curious confirms ready. Let's get to it. Yes, let's get on in. I almost switched over to camera without putting on my hat, which would have been horribly embarrassing. If you want to buy my hat, you can do that. RodeoArcade.com, if you head to the Total Biscuit page, you will find Axiom merchandise, including this cap, as well as official hoodies, even women's fit t-shirts now available, all sorts of cool stuff. Yes, indeed. So if you want the same stuff that Impact is wearing in the finals of DreamHack, you can do that. It may bring you luck. It is entirely possible. I believe he's just about to land, actually. And hopefully, we'll be buying Ryung a nice meal for team killing him out of the tournament. All right, let's get back into this tournament, though. New Pompeii will be the place to be. This is a Ling map. This generally ends within the first six or so minutes. It's a very quick map. It is utterly cutthroat in every possible respect. Which, to be fair, is kind of cool. So let's get in. Ladies and gentlemen... There we go. It's like, hang on a minute, my screen's not loading. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to New Pompeii. It's my pleasure to bring you in the blue trunks. Representing Team MVP playing Zerg, his name is Shine. Not to be confused with Samsung Khan Shine. He's not Samsung Khan, right? I think he is. Versus his opponent to the northwest position in the slightly lighter blue. At which point I thank God for Game Heart, because... Ah... Playing Zerg, representing Team Startail. He is quite curious. All right, New Pompeii. If you have never seen this map before, and I usually do this intro pretty much every time because we get brand new viewers to the Clan Wars every week, and they're very unfamiliar with a lot of these maps because the Clan Wars use some very unusual stuff made by the community. We've got all sorts of really talented map makers that have created this pool here. And New Pompeii is a five spawn map. One of the only five spawn maps really to ever exist in StarCraft 2. And it has a very interesting symmetry to it in the sense that there are two entrances to the main, not one. Here's one. And there's the other. And the naturals, potential naturals, are equidistant. So you can take either of them. But which one you wish to take is probably going to be very reliant on where your opponent is. And Curious, pretty much going to get lucky here by the looks of it. He is going to expand away from his opponent. Does it make a lot of difference versus Zerg on this map? No, because once speed is out, you can really go either way. You might notice if you try and get through the center of the map, you will be blocked off by rocks. You can break through, but not with Lings. You're going to have to wait until you have some higher tier units to break this stuff down. But you can go around the side of the map. Like you can go this way, or you can go this way. And Ling Baneling ambushes, attacking from both sides in two small groups, have proven to be highly effective and the strategy of choice for this matchup on this map. And really, we've seen almost every team put a Zerg on this map. It's very unusual to see races that are not Zerg play on New Pompeii, simply because it is such a good Zerg map. And walling off against Zerg as another race is very difficult. 
Because you've got to wall off two ramps, which is something most players do not want to do. It makes other races very, very vulnerable to stuff like I mean, eight pulls, nine pulls, ten pulls. Just early speedling, baneling, all ins. So we see Zerg play this map almost all the time. Every now and again, we'll see a Protoss or a Terran, but generally not against a Zerg player. I don't think we've ever seen a non-Zerg fight a Zerg on this map, actually. I'll have to look back through the history of it, but I'm pretty sure we haven't. It's just really hard to defend otherwise. So, let's see where this goes. Speed is on the way up here for Curious first, and he's bringing up a couple of Queens as well. There are Lings out on the map already, of course. Shine will scout. He's going to have an idea of what his opponent's doing, what his gas timing is, how much gas has been mined, whether or not the pool is researching speed, whether or not there's a really early roach warren down, and the baneling nest coming up here for Curious. A nice little timing here, actually, because Shine didn't see that. He built it just as Shine's ling actually left, and it's going to get killed off before he scouts the baneling nest, most likely. So that's a little bit of an edge here for Curious already. In this matchup, since it's so symmetrical and you've got so much similarity, obviously, as you might imagine, because they're both playing Zerg, you kind of have to know about things like this Baneling Nest. And the fact of the matter is that Shine doesn't uh, know about it. He hasn't scouted it. He went into the base, and then the Baneling Nest was dropped just behind it. But it doesn't look like it's going to be too important, because Shine has elected to take the defensive path. Unfortunately, as we have seen, there are problems with doing that because defending the natural is not as easy as it would be. And it's more at the point defending the natural is actually just as easy as it would be on a regular map. Defending the main isn't because there's this route through the back here. Now, notice where Shine is putting his Baneling Nest. He's setting this up so that he can move his queen here and create a block so that if a run by does come in from the side, then he is going to be able to do great. He's also placed an Overlord right here, which will see Lings and Banelings coming. Very important. And as the meta evolves on this map, we are seeing these players learn that. But Curious with a great start, picking off a couple of Lings for free, and is now going to make his way in. There's not really much to kill here with the Banelings. There goes the detonation, and Curious will follow that one up and take out two drones and only two, actually. This is a great start for Shine, honestly. Curious didn't get much done with this, and he's going to be driven back quite easily. Shine looks like he held that really well. Not a brilliant detonation there for Shine, but not terrible either. I mean, units lost, that's not really that important. I think a lot was traded there for very little. So Shine can now successfully counterattack, but he does have to watch out for Banelings. And it looks like both of these guys are actually just going to fight straight up. Neither of them wish to go the other way. I think they've probably noticed that the Overlord spread across the map is very good, so all entrances are guarded here. And Shine will attempt to take on Curious straight up. Curious has a few more Banelings than Shine does right now. Oh! That was an interesting one. That was a very interesting one. Lovely timing, actually, there by Curious. What he did was he sent a Ling in just as the Bane Ling was about to spawn. And as a result, Shine was not able to quickly enough tell it not to explode, which was a really, really cool move. Shine is going to get picked off here by the looks of it. He's going to lose pretty much all of his Bane Lings. Curious pulling his Bane Lings back quite nicely. Such a cool move by Curious there. Such a great little timing. I, I, I don't see that very often. That's a, it's just a degree beyond in terms of precision here. And Curious' Baneling control is looking pretty good right now. It was looking fairly terrible earlier. He didn't get a great set of shots off, but you got to bear in mind that that does give Curious still a couple of drones lead, and in a mirror match, that can matter. So even though Curious did trade inefficiently, the consequences of that are not apparent because Shine wasn't able to get anything done. And once again, we see Curious just try and peel off one Ling. He's looking to try and get the detonation there. That was pretty much equal on both sides. And he decides, you know what? Okay, you're going to be tricksy. I'm going to trade two Banes for two Banes. Because you know what? I'm going to get my lair up. And indeed, his opponent is doing exactly the same thing. So we are actually going to see this go to lair tech, which is really rare. Uh, usually these games are decided in about seven minutes. Because like I said, it's, it's pretty brutal. But it looks like these guys both kind of know what they're doing. And they have realized, look, Overlord positioning is so important. I have got to guard both entrances here. I must be aware of what my opponent is doing. So attempts to do Ling Bane Ling flanks that we've seen from previous contenders on this map are not as effective now because those overlords are in great positions. And it looks like we're going to see Muta Wars, folks, which is not something we see too much lately. It can still happen, certainly. Curious looking for the Bane Ling connection. He's not going to get it, surely. Absolutely not. No way. And great trades from both sides right now. But... Shine does have the Ling lead, and he's going to actually make it work for him. He does devour a couple of Zerglings, and there are very few Banelings on the map, and indeed where they are is not even close to where they need to be at this point. 
Where are Shine's Banes? They're actually in defensive positions here. And Link's coming in. He's not going to be able to fight here. I think he knows that. And interestingly enough, Curious is going to take a third base. Yes, we are seeing it happen, folks. Third base ZBZ on New Pompeii, as rare as that is. Both of these guys will be going Mutalisk momentarily, which is the next phase of this battle. And they're, they're trading so tit for tat. Uh, it's actually quite equal. Oh, it was. That was a pretty good hit, honestly. Shine has to be fairly happy with that one. And as long as he doesn't take too many hits here from Curious's Banelings, he should be all right. And he's hoping that Curious... He's actually engaging with small groups and then trying to peel off to take the Banes out, but he's not able to do that at the moment. There's not really enough Banes for it to matter, though. They're not going to be able to break this ramp with the Spinecrawler being there. I'm kind of surprised that Shine is attempting to make this work, because there's no way Curious is going to let him. But he is able to use it to drive the Lings away from Curious's Banelings and then pick them off as well, and then gain the advantage. This is so technical going on between these two right now. I know most of you look at it and it's like, oh, this is completely uncontrolled chaos. No, it's not. This is really, really technical play from both of these guys. And it's absolutely awesome to watch. And the meter's now popping. Okay, so currently the mutal lead is in favor of Shine, but that is going to change very, very soon. And unfortunately, Shine does not manage to get away with that overseer. He's going to be picked off. Wasn't even able to get a Contaminate down. He didn't have the energy for it. And the third base is up for Curious. It is on its way for Shine. This could be a pretty big disadvantage because fifths and si fifth and sixth gases have been taken for Curious here. Yeah. And while he, I mean, he's even ahead in the mute account, it's going to be pretty much the same up to this point. But once these fifths and, and sixth gases are populated, which is now, there's going to be a really big problem here for Shine because he's not going to be able to keep up with his opponent's muter build uh, I'm a bit concerned there. He is trying to build some more drones, and he will be able to gain an economic lead, which might help him out a little bit. But as we have seen before, Muta versus Muta is kind of brutal. And Curious, with the great run by, he's going to force a cancel. There's no way. There's no way that's getting stopped. And Shine drives the Mutas away from his base, but that third base cancellation is huge. Well, look, look at the income, right? This is the really important thing to note here. Look at Curious's gas versus Shine's. It's massive. It's a massive advantage. That means that... Frankly, Shine is forced into this really horrible position where he has to play defensively with his Mutalisks. He cannot attack safely with the Muters, because if he does, well, he will lose. Yeah, it's, just, it's just straight up Muta versus Muta, the guy who has the most wins. They're both going for Carapace there, and there's even the risk if Shine goes to attack. He's going to get a Baneling here, which is great. He might even, you know, he's not, he's, oh, he gets a Queen. That's actually kind of a slow reaction from Curious. Kind of surprising. Attempted run by by Shine is shut down for the most part. I mean, Curious just really has the space for gas, as you can see. There's no question about that. Attempting to make it work, and I don't think he's quite got enough lanes. No, he does not. And Shine, uh, Curious is going to be able to get the cleanup here on Shine. Curious, on the other hand, now moving across the map, and he is starting to gain that mutilate that I was talking about. He has that gas advantage, and he can spend it and make it work. And that means that you're going to have to play defensively here. Oh, man, Shine looks like he might even lose another base here. But it looks like Curious is going to back off. I'm not entirely sure if Curious... He's got to realize that he has a gas advantage here. He knows he picked off that third. So he's going to want to commit with Muters very quickly. And look at the lead he's now getting. So Shine would have to play defensively around Queens and Spores. Or get a really, really good fight with Lings and Banelings underneath to try and absorb the Glaive Worm bounce. Which is obviously... Uh, a very important thing in those fights even though it doesn't necessarily look it at first glance and shine can't fight here he is outnumbered it's as simple as that he's probably gonna end a oh, man lava went down here it's rare that we see that links coming in around the side shine drives it away Engagement comes in here. There is a queen on the ground, but one queen's not going to make too much of a difference. There are more muters coming in here, and Shine's in trouble. He's got to start mining from this base. I think he needs to play Spore Crawlers, but of course, every time he does that, that means that he, that's one less drone. And in a mirror match, that makes a huge difference. Gets an Overlord, always nice, getting a little bit more value out of that, but Curious knows. He's got a smell now that he has the lead here, and Shine cannot win this fight. There's no way, and I'm very surprised he's engaging here. I guess he thinks that's his only opportunity, but he will lose. There's not even a question about that. He is vastly outnumbered by Curious here, and I think that is probably going to be the end of the game. Curious with the 80 mutant lead, that's it. Shine realizes it's not going to happen, and GG. Curious picks up the first in this best of seven series there. Nice little pickup. Kind of surprised that he elected to fight. He had a third base up. He could have sacrificed that one, and he could have maybe started building spores at his natural, as well as at his third over the other side of the map. I don't think a player of Shine's caliber would ever possibly believe that he could win that Muta fight. No way. 
You know, he knew that his opponent had a third and was mining gas. I think that was just kind of a resignation of defeat there. But honestly, I think, you know, throw down a few spores and maybe you've got a better shot. Spores do three-shot muters. So it was definitely a possibility. All right, folks. First map on the board goes to Startail. And it's most likely that they will concede the next, I've got to say. Uh, I, I hate being down on Legend, but it's super, for God's sake. It's, I hope Legend has an incredible build. We're going to find out after the break whether he does. You're watching Shoutcraft Clan Wars, sponsored by MLG TV. Remember to pick up the MLG TV app if you want to watch on mobile. We'll also remind you when we go live. All right, folks. I'll be back shortly. Don't go anywhere. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft Clan Wars. Yes, indeed. Okay, so we have the next match coming in here between these two players. This is going to be a tough one, I think, for Legend. He's going up against Super, who is pretty much god tier. And Legend, unfortunately, struggled against Death End yesterday in the match against Complexity. It was, in fact, the only match that Startail actually dropped to Complexity. And Legend looked completely outclassed by Death End, and Super is pretty good. Like, I don't want to knock on Death End. I certainly don't want to knock on Death End, but I, I think Death End himself would, in a heartbeat, say, yes, MVP Super is a better player than I am. Okay, so I hope Legend has a special build. We're actually seeing TVP on Fallen Dreams, which is a fairly rare matchup for this map. Again, very Zerg-favored map for a, a lot of these matchups anyway. So we don't see a huge amount of TVP on it. Just waiting to confirm if Super is ready to go. I don't want to start off without him confirming. But... This is, on paper, a fairly large mismatch, unfortunately. Legend's been sent out by Startel. I think Legend, in fact, I know for a fact that Legend has been the person behind making sure that this whole thing is happening for Startel. Like, he is the one coordinating this particular tournament for them. And he, he's like the guy communicating English. He's absolutely fantastic, by the way. But he's also playing as well, so... It's kind of weird because, like I said, there's actually a few B-teamers for Startail who I think would be more than capable of playing in this clan war and could certainly use the exposure, but they don't send them out, you know? They, they pretty much have a very regular roster for the clan wars, and they stick to it. And that roster is very similar to what you see on the screen right here, you know? It is curious. It's hack, pet, legend. It's life when they have them. Obviously, currently, they don't have them right now. And then, of course, SKS slash Trickster being involved in there, too. And then, kind of outside of that regular roster, that's kind of it. Right? They they don't seem to send out any of the other rookies or B-teamers or anything like that, which is a bit strange. You know? Obviously, like someone like Startail Miss, probably not a very good idea. You know, she's, she's not of the caliber that she would need to be to fight in these clan wars yet, but that is Legend, so... It's, you know, I, I would have even preferred to see someone like Miss come out for Startail. But uh, they have they have other players, very much so. So we discussed this yesterday, actually, myself and Sheth were just talking about kind of how strange it is. The way that Startail, like, they obviously take the Clan Wars seriously and they send out, like, an A roster. But then they also send out Legend and he loses every match consistently. And it's really weird. We don't really understand why things are the way that they are uh and super has dc'd okay let's let's try and get him back into the map uh, super appears to be having a few problems here okay we should be able to get him back in there momentarily but if you look at startail's roster like if you go on liquipedia you can there's probably a couple of names that you don't really recognize there you, you certainly recognize panic he's not in this clan war today but he's regularly in their roster outside of that who are you? Who's missing? You know, who doesn't show up all that often? When you've got Booster, you've got Suhusen, and you've got Zero. You know, all three of them. And are they particularly active players? Do they play all that much? No. Uh, it's, they don't have really all that much under their belt, with the exception of, exception of Suhusen, or who used to be known as Line, uh, Zenex Line, who was actually a GSL Code S competitor. Okay. So it looks like Super should be able to get back in here okay I've got, I'm gonna have to tell him to relog unfortunately we seem to be having a bit of a battle net issue there but yeah I mean, I'd love to see Sahusin come back out that would be great I haven't seen line play in ages 
he is still on the roster it but there's always these weird kind of situations with korean teams where some players just retire quietly you now lion hasn't really had a result okay we're gonna i'm gonna remake the lobby here see if that helps to get him back in lion hasn't really had a result since 2012 you know he was in code s in 2012 what has he done since then not much yeah he actually as far as i'm aware hasn't really played heart of the swarm at all there's there's no evidence of it it's possible that he might still be playing but i don't know it's uh it's so depressing to see that you know if that actually is the case that would suck and of course you know it's unfortunately not the environment where you want to be hiring new players right now there's a lot of unfortunate doubt within the starcraft scene right now uh, people are just not 100 percent sure where it's going and whether or not it will be around in the same form next year i, I think that we're probably stabilized i don't think we're going to hemorrhage any any other players or any other teams in a big way i think we, we've we've kind of shed the people that we needed to shed and some of the people that we didn't need to shed but yeah, I think we're pretty much stable at this point, but it's just, it's so sad to see Startel go from, like, the biggest team in Korea to, you know, a fairly small roster with some people who are very much unaccounted for. Alright, looks like these guys are about ready to get started. My apologies for the delay here between these two. Super confirms ready. We're just going to make sure Legend is ready as well now that I've brought him back in. Okay, let's do it. Legend versus Super. As I said, I ideally hope that Legend has a plan, because if he doesn't, then Super is gonna probably wipe the floor with him. Like I said, Death End crushed him completely yesterday, and Super is a better player than Death End. That is a fair assessment to make. He is of top quality. He is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely not to be messed around with. So... I hope that Legend has a plan. The, the the annoying thing, I suppose, for Legend is that he goes up against a player who is Protoss. You know? And if even if he had a cheese in mind, most cheeses don't work anymore against Protoss, thanks to the Mothership Core. So I have no idea what Legend's planning on doing, but let's see. You know? he, it seems like he's very much a seat warmer right now. He, he is in this clan war specifically because they couldn't get another player and they needed to have a roster of six. Otherwise, they can't compete. But never mind. Let's see what happens. To the northeast position in the Red Trunks playing Terran. Startail Legend, number one observer in the world, of course. Versus his opponent to the southwest position in the Blue Trunks playing Protoss. The mighty MVP Super. And he's a machine, this guy. Like, he is just ridiculously good. Legend's gonna have a pretty tough time. So, let's see what he decides to do. Is there even a one base all-in that works against Protoss anymore? Probably not. Not that I can think of. Nothing really comes to mind. I, I mean, maybe you could still do Proxy Marauder? Maybe? That might work. But, I don't know. I mean, I think it would require the Protoss to really skip the Mothership Core and get really, really greedy. And Super's not even, Super's not going for anything ridiculous like a Nexus first. Which, you know, I'm glad that he's not. I don't think this is really the map to do it. You've got this, what you'd think is kind of a semi-pocket expansion here. It looks like it, if you look at the map. But then you realize, oh, there's actually no ramp. So this area right here is really vulnerable. And it's very easy to run up in this direction. What is Legend is actually going CC first. The ball's on this man to go CC first against Super. Good lord. Well, all I can say is I dearly hope that Super doesn't build a, a, one Zealot and a Mothership Core. Because that might be enough. That's all I'm saying. It might very well be enough. Will Super build a Zealot or will he... I mean, generally you don't. It looks like he... Let's see. If he hits 100 gas and he builds 100 minerals, he builds a Zealot. Yes, he's going to build a zealot. Okay. All right. Well, he's a bit suspicious, but that's kind of cool because it does give you a little bit of ability to poke against a Terran player. We're going to see Legend do the catch-up build, which is to build two barracks right after that. Proxy going down in the corner here. This could very well be a proxy Stargate. I think it is. All right. Looking at the angle of it, I think mean, that's right into the middle of the line. It's pretty likely. We're going to see it go down momentarily. It could be Twilight. It could be gateways, which would be very weird, but no, it's going to be absolutely be a proxy Stargate. And why not? You know, a legend is 
He's kind of going for the anti-Oracle build here. Wow, Super just almost lost his Zealot. That would have actually been a big deal if that had happened, but it didn't. Legend's kind of going for the anti-Oracle build, which is to get as many barracks up as possible, kind of delay the gas, delay the factory. But without an engineering bay, it's pretty unlikely that Sup that Super's Oracle is going to get shot down here. You know, you pretty much need six Marines to effectively deal with an Oracle, and that's assuming that you don't have someone with Super's Micro behind that Oracle. And he does. There's a bunker up here, which is great. The Zealot's just going to casually walk past it, though, I feel. He may decide not to push. I think what he's going to do is he's going to use the Zealot at the front to try and draw the Marines forward and then just hit with the Oracle in the back. And since there is no Engineering Bay and Legend... I, I would have thought Legend would play safe against stuff like this, you know? It's, it's a pretty standard thing. This is a good map for it. It's Most maps are good for Proxy Oracle. There's not that much risk involved in it. So, I mean, it's not like Legend doesn't have enough Marines to fend it off, but they're in the wrong place. He's currently guarding against... I think he does realize the possibility of an Oracle, but I think he thinks it's here and not here. And that's going to hit the main base, and it's going to do a lot of damage. Legend pulls pretty damn quickly, though. Pretty good reaction times. But the problem is, there wasn't anything in the bunker. And Legend is now going to have to fight. And he brings the SCVs around. Oh, wow! Legend gets the surround on the Stalker. Sick. He only lost six workers from that. That could have been a hell of a lot worse. Man, legend. What a great surround. So cool. All right, well, that that attack has been for the moment thwarted, but there is another Oracle coming in. So, and they could hit both at once. The thing is, he actually has enough Marines to fight this now. Just, yeah, because one Oracle's damaged, so he does have enough Marines to fight this. He doesn't have Stim, so chasing them down is going to be difficult, but he can ward the Oracles away. And Leg what is Super doing? Is Super asleep? I, that is shocking, absolutely shocking, for Super to lose an Oracle that way. I'm, I mean, he got, he didn't even get a worker out of it. That was ridiculous. Super should have never done that. That was a huge blunder. Legend playing rock solid here. What can I say? Absolutely rock solid. All right, well, Engineering Bay is on the way up here for Legend. He has successfully thwarted this proxy Oracle play. And now he's heading into the mid-game. He's got a, a solid army. Super is now only building his militia core. Uh, so if Legend is ac had actually attacked, he could have done some damage, strangely enough. But you know, generally speaking, as a Terran player, you don't make that kind of assumption. It's pretty silly to do. We're going to see Super go into a Twilight Council. Where's he going to go with that? And probably Stalkers, I would imagine. Maybe Blinky. I mean, he could go for Charge, potentially. We'll see where he decides to go. He's going with the plus one upgrade here. His gas count, not good. Oh, Legend is asking for a pause. Okay. So we're going to pause that. There we go. Okay, just 30 second pause here. I keep forgetting that the, the Koreans, they, especially since they play in Pro League, they don't pause themselves. They wait for the admin to do it. So I was just sitting around there for a few seconds like, why is Legend not pausing? Uh... But no, it looks like that's sorted. So it should be 30 seconds. But Legend is playing uncharacteristically well right now. Or more to the point, Super is playing uncharacteristically terribly. And I that is not the sort of thing that I ever usually say about Super. Super is so, so, so very good. So I am really surprised. There we go. Really, really shocking. Legend's just played solid, honestly. And Super has just been sloppy, which, I, I don't know, that's some really silly mistakes from him. Well, I mean, we did write Legend off pretty quickly, but it looks like he does have a shot at this, certainly. There's no real doubt about that. Super gonna move around here and see what he can see. And he's gonna get this. One more worker. S what? Super? What are you doing? Almost lost that oracle. Good lord. I'm sorry, I'm just shocked. I, I really am. It's This is not the super that I'm used to seeing. Legend is holding his own right here. His economy's looking okay. It's not too shabby. He is floating quite a lot, but he is building add-ons as well. So, I, I, if anything, Legend does need to add more barracks. I think he realizes that now. Super tries to stop that from happening. He doesn't get it. Super is driven away yet again. 
But yeah, I mean, Legend was a bit late on building those extra barracks, I think, so his macro's slipping a little bit, but otherwise he's fine. He's keeping up with his supply depots nicely. I was thought to say this, that Legend is a terrible player. He's not. You know, he's pretty high-ranked on Korea. You know, he's at least Masters. But I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with him this time and really weirded out by Super's play. Well, he's trying to make that Oracle count, just getting SCVs where he can. What is Super doing in the meantime? He's going for the Super build. That is just being two base Colossus. And Blink Stalker added on there as well. But honestly, Legend is in a good position to repel that. As long as he remembers to build Vikings. You know, he's up to two medevacs. He can go up to four. And then he can consider his Viking production. Legend with the upgrades. He's got the stim. He is missing combat shield. But it is on its way. I'm a bit worried for Legend pushing out here. Oh man, he could get an Oracle here. Super sleepy. And, no, it looks like they're both sleepy, so never mind. But he is heading across the map here. He's got to be careful of the bridges, of course. He could potentially got, get caught out on this bridge if he's not careful. But I think he should be able to make his way across without the bridges actually retracting on him. Unless he gets delayed, which would be unfortunate here. He, no, he, he's decided he's not going to cross yet. I don't blame him. He's going to send a Stim Marine across just so he can scout and see if there's a third base. And there isn't. Viking's now on the way. Bridge is going to retract, of course, and Super's playing really passively and building up this army. And frankly, it's not inconceivable that we might end up seeing Legend actually beat that army. This Oracle's still kind of sharking around trying to get kills. It's not really finding anything. But Legend is very Marauder heavy, which is excellent against Super's composition. Super is going for blink he is actually going for charge i think he's realized his opponent is very marauder heavy so he wants to actually go for zealots instead he hasn't built any more stalkers after that even though he did get blink oh he is warping in some more stalkers anyway i think it's maybe just the balanced force then but whatever the case like legend is well prepared army supply wise legend is ahead here legends ahead in overall supply as well he's sitting comfortably on two bases super is posturing with an army but it's not a very big one so, Legend has a shot at this. He really does. Three Vikings out, two more on the way. Doesn't quite have the numbers to really fight these Colossus, but with a good flank, and especially with the Marauder Heavy army he has here, it could work. He can't wait too long, though. Ooh, nice revelation there. That's going to be ideal. He cannot wait too long. If he does, the Immortals will come out, and the charge will be done, plus two will be done. And if anything, I'd say Legend has neglected his upgrades. He hasn't put an armory down at all. He has committed to this 1-1 attack. And he needs to go soon. He does. A third base is on the way here for Super. It once He's, he's gone for double starport, which I like a lot. I think once you get nine Vikings here against three Colossus, that's a good number. You should fight. And the longer Legend waits, the worse it kind of gets for him. Because that third base will go up. And Legend is now moving across the map with the rest of his army. Templar tech is on the way here as well. So he, he's got to get ready to go. He does. He's got to think about attacking. He's got the Viking count now. I think he can actually fight Super's army in the right kind of positions. So far, he's just kind of patrolling. I think he might want to max before he goes. That may be a mistake because you rely on the Protoss player to max and also to get more upgrades than you. Now, plus two armor is a big deal, especially against Marines. I mean, even against Marauders, it can be a big deal if... They happen to be shooting at Zealots. Great revelation again here from Super. So, Legend is being delayed. And that's unfortunate. Because, oh my god. Legend, what the... Legend pulls the boys, ladies and gentlemen. Most of them from the main. That's like 25 SCVs in that army. That's got spotted because that observer is there. And this grand fight is going to go down. With all of these SCVs. You can't... Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't go yet. Don't go yet. Wait for your SCVs. Wait for the SCVs. Don't, don't, no, 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 legend, legend, the SCVs. Wait for the SCVs. Okay, okay, he's waiting for the SCVs. All right, thank God. God, okay, right, legend is ready to rock and roll. He could foreseeably win this fight. It could happen. There's a lot of stuff here. And here we go, legend trying to get the concave. And he takes down one Colossus. Second Colossus dies very quickly as well. I think legend might have what it takes. I really think he does. He's landing the Vikings here to tank the Immortal shots. He has what it takes. He's breaking through Super here. He's lost a ton of supply, but he actually has the numbers as long as he keeps going. He's pushing this back. There's no meat 
anymore. We need to see a stim from Legend. We need to see him bring this down. He is fighting. He continues to fight. Super is dropping in supply. Legend needs to take out that third base pretty much immediately. I mean, he took so much economic damage pulling the boys like that. I'm a bit worried about this army, but he actually still has a lot of units. He's bringing in reinforcements, but they are taking a while to get there. I hope Legend doesn't overstim. I really hope he doesn't overstim, and he could. He very well could. I think he's going to be very careful with this engagement. He does pick off an Archon. He's going to be able to kite against this. Legend is still fighting, but I think he may be getting a bit greedy. Reinforcements are coming in. Legend needs to back off. He can't retreat. Okay, the bridge just comes up at the right time. Stim the Marauders repeatedly into this. He is still fighting. He is continuing to fight. Can Legend actually break it? He might just have the units for it. The Marines come in. He tries to smash the Immortal down. He does it. He lifts up and he has to leave. Oh my god. Legend almost broke Super there. Almost broke Super's back. He has continued to bring in units. Legend's got to be careful, though. Super is not going to have any of this. He's bringing in more units. Legend with a good spread, though. Takes one, takes two. Needs to watch out for the bridge. He knows it. He pulls back, scans to see if there's an observer, and immediately picks up and looks for a drop into that natural by the looks of it. And Super is out of position right now. Legend is fighting. Somehow. And he's actually... I mean, I wouldn't say he's winning right now. He's actually kind of behind in terms of... He pulled so many of his SCVs, he really needed that to be a kill move. And I'm very concerned about those medevacs as well. They're very, very close to dying. But Legend has put up a really strong fight here, surprisingly so. He's got a fight at the top of the ramp, which is a great little edge for him. But I don't think Legend has the numbers, unfortunately. This has been a really cool effort from Legend, honestly. And he fought so, so well against Super. But I think this will be the end, certainly. He doesn't, I mean, he's only he's still on two bases. He doesn't have the economy behind him anymore. He is still continuing to rally units. He has kind of an equal army supply, but he has no medevacs anymore. He is building four at a time. But once his third is reestablished here for super, especially with this continued upgrade advantage, I have a feeling things are going to go pretty badly for Legend. But you never know. We counted him out before. And he fought well. He, he came prepared for this one with a good solid build. Super now into that mineral line. Those precious SCVs going down. I mean, that is not something that Legend can afford right now. He needs those SCVs. He's showing no intention whatsoever that he wants to take a third base. All right. Legend has four fresh medevacs. He has an army. 18 marines and 12 marauders. He is going up against three archons. 11 zealots. He could still foreseeably win this fight. He would definitely win it if the entire Protoss army fell into the lake. That would work pretty well. Wow, Legend's just ignoring his economy now, I think. He's he's losing so much to this Oracle. 18 kills. So brutal. The economy of Legend is in tatters now. He, if he's gonna go, he's gonna go now. You know, while the Protoss is still recovering, I think. Because he's just getting behind now. He may decide to attack on two fronts. And it looks like he's gonna try to do that. He's gonna rally his reinforcements across the map to threaten the third. The Mothership Core was never rebuilt, so he actually has a good shot at taking that out. And then, move across the map. Oh, oh, Legend, Legend. Oh. So, wow. Yeah, pick him up, pick him up. It's okay, okay. Now he's going to drop this. The cannon's still up. This is Legend's last chance. He's got to kill him now. There's an equal army supply. He is slightly behind in upgrades. He is attacking both sides. I hope he's attacking both sides. If Legend doesn't actually strike this, I think he's going to... This entire army is out of position. And a four drop will probably kill this Nexus here. It's certainly going to do economic damage. Ah, Legend goes in a little bit early. He was trying to bait him away from that Nexus, but he wasn't able to do that. Now the units are coming in. Legend will try and fight. I think he's just going to get out at this point. He does take the Nexus out. Nice play. But this Nexus is still up. So it could be... It could still be a pretty bad situation. He is trying to get back into this game, but it is 10 SCVs versus 35. Oh, and he runs his army right into charging zealots and loses more of them. So this Nexus did go down, but you got to consider there was barely anything left. I mean, it is slowing down the gas production, certainly for Super. He's got to be almost mined out of gas. He is. Actually, he's mined out already in one of these. So he's only mining gas from three, and he's about to be mining gas from two. That's cool, but... I, I still... I'm sorry for doubting Legend. I really am. He's put on such a great fight here, but... Oh, the rest of the SCVs are coming. This is it. Legend's gonna make this happen or he's gonna die. The Mothership Core was never rebuilt. There are Archons. There's so many Archons. Oh, my. Another Nexus is going down. Legend has got to take the fight of his life here. 
but I, he's put on an entertaining match, honestly. And I give him all credit for that. So maybe I, I prejudge this way too early. He still has an army. It's a bit small. It's not going to do the job, I don't think. But we will see. All right, he gets a decent shot off. Focusing down the Archons. One goes down. He's microing back as best he can to try and keep those Archons out of the way. But the force fields have gone down now. And Super, like the bulldozer he is, is going to run over the rest of the Legends army. And that, as they say, is going to be that. But hey, GG Legend put on a great show there. So well done to him. But it wasn't quite enough to take out Super, who played uncharacteristically sloppy at the start of the game, honestly. I expected way more out of him there. And he made mistakes that allowed Legend to actually get in that position. It was a good game, though. It's a good game. All right. Well, that resets the scoreline. So we're now effectively in a best of five format. Let's see where this goes. The next match is going to be the 2v2. Sniper and Keen taking on Hack and Curious. We'll be right back, folks. You're watching Shoutcraft Clan Wars brought to you by MLG TV. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft Clan Wars, the 2v2. Uh, is, you know, I look forward to the 2v2 every time we do a clan war, especially when the Koreans are involved. It's so cool to watch. And MVP really brought it last time around. So I want to see what strategy they come up with again. Maybe they do the same build. I guess we're going to find out. Hack confirms ready. Sniper confirms ready. Curious confirms ready. Keen confirms ready. Let's rock and roll. Here we go. The scoreline is currently one apiece after Legend surprisingly brought Super to the brink. After some really silly slip-ups from Super. A kind of brutal SCV pull. And, you know, again, I do genuinely think, I genuinely believe that Legend could have actually had that game. I feel that he should have maybe gone for a different Nexus or tried to snipe tech instead of trying to take out a Nexus, which was basically empty anyway, or focused his attention on the third. I also feel that his attempt to snipe the third was a bit premature. He mistimed it. He attacked into that the natural and tried to draw the army away but he moved his nexus sniping force on the third too soon and ended up getting caught i do think maybe he could have made that happen you know if he had destroyed the economy of his opponent completely he could have made that happen so yeah i'm pretty impressed by legends play honestly so i take back most of what i said he, he looked it looked like a completely different player honestly i gotta say he looked a hell of a lot better than he did against death end yesterday so there you go all right folks here we go the 2v2 commences between Team MVP, playing Zerg, the great villain himself. Zerg who stole Christmas. It is Sniper and his teammate Keen, who is thankfully better now. He was ill, which sucked, but he is better now. That's good. We like our Commander Keen. Versus their opponents from Team Startail, in the Blue Trunks playing Zerg, we have Curious. And in the Light Blue Trunks playing Terran, we have Hack. Cool. This is going to be a good one, I think. I don't see why it wouldn't be. MVP are already very experienced when it comes to the 2v2. Startail looked a bit shakier, I've got to admit. They definitely looked a bit shakier, although they they were certainly good enough to take out complexity in this 2v2 yesterday. So, never count them out. I think the Koreans are starting to get a feel for the 2v2, so any kind of foreign domination that we expect to see in this matchup is rapidly disappearing as the Koreans actually figure this map out. And they are so good at figuring out maps, better than anybody. So definitely be afraid, be very afraid when dealing with these guys. All right, so will MVP execute the same build? It's not looking like it. In fact, MVP are actually just going to go, f he's going for a wall off, safe wall off here for Keen. We saw a really awesome build and it was, I, I wonder if it was Alive's idea or if they come up with it anyway. But what ended up happening was Alive went for this proxy barracks here into a bunker here. And he used that kind of as a staging area. He knocked the rocks down at almost zero health. He attacked through here, picked off a proxy starport, pulled back and collapsed the rocks behind him to prevent the Ling chase. Which was cool. So awesome to watch. Looks like Hack and Keen doing identical things right now. Sniper and Curious. We actually have Curious going for the Expand, which definitely risky. <laughs> no doubt about that. Sniper does have and is immediately going into speed. This is going to give him a bit of an edge. And since neither player has elected to actually wall off the center or knock the rocks down here, this attack coming out of Sniper could be pretty good. Immediately into speed. He's going to have it done pretty much by the just over the four minute mark there. And Hack is going to see that. He's going to be aware. And Hack's going to be pretty safe. 
the person who is not going to be pretty safe is going to be Curious. That, that's the concern, because Curious went for an expansion. He's not going to have speed for a while. He's taking his gas now, and we're going to see a Baneling Nest come up from Sniper. So he wants to do damage. He really does. I He may try and take out the Terran, but with a bunker in position, and since Sniper knows that's there, it seems unlikely he will. I have a feeling he's going to try and attack the Zerg player instead. Now, what will Keen do to back this up? It's probably going to be Hellions. There's a Starpot coming up behind there as well, so we will see Banshee. Sniper, interesting. He's going to try and uh, nibble the rocks down, at least down to low health. He's probably going to want to attack and then use it to cut off a potential Hellion counterattack. So, we'll see. Sniper doesn't... Uh, bear in mind that he doesn't actually know much about what his opponent's been doing. He doesn't know what Curious has been up to. Up to this point. And Sniper is going to have speed momentarily. Okay, and he's going to know that Curious doesn't. That was a great little surround there by Sniper. And he's able to morph the Banelings in out of sight. And Curious doesn't see it. And here we go. So, Sniper's going to go for it. There is a Spine on the way up. And there is a Queen there as well. I, yes, Hack is not in position to really help yet. We're going to have to see it wait a couple more minutes. If he wants to bring a Banshee or a Medivac over there with some Hellions in, he's going to have to wait. So, basically, Curious is kind of on his own here. And unfortunately, he's going up against Keen as well. The Hellions are on their way. A hacker's got to help. He's got to go immediately here. Otherwise, this is going to be horrible. Not a great detonation initially for Sniper, but he's got six more Banelings here. Let's see how good Curious's defense is. It's going to have to be absolutely awesome. Sniper's still with the four Banelings. The Spine is going to get transfused. It looks like there's no transfuse energy, so that's going to go down here as well. Where are the reinforcements? Hacker's coming in behind. He's trying to make this work. Ling's detonates. So far, Curious is kind of okay. He's actually still got a drone lead, if you can believe it. But Keen's bringing in the Hellions behind this. Let's see how good Hack's control is. It's not too bad. It's actually really, really good. Hack's going to win this fight. Although, Sniper comes in just to save that last Hellion. And I have a feeling these rocks are going to get collapsed here. Oh, my God. The rocks are getting collapsed. The rocks are getting collapsed. Oh, wow. And Keen... He, Hack actually gets one over the other side before that happens. That's crazy, crazy stuff going on here. Hack can't get through anymore. Okay, Banshee time. So this is where we're going here. Banshee's on the way across from both sides. How well prepared are they? Sniper's building a spore. He's not quite ready, but he does have his queens available here. Cloak is going to be done just after both of these Banshees arrive here. So we will see what happens. Keen... He sent his Banshee over to the Zerg player's base, but there's no Queens. You know, this is the kind of cool thing, because Curious lost his Queens, and he's trying to bring this one back. Keen's Banshee does way, way more damage, and that means Hack's Banshee, which is kind of hanging around here, is going to end up going after the Terran player, which was the right thing to do, instead of going after a prepared Zerg. But Keen's already done damage here. He's got four kills. He's going to be able to pick off maybe a couple more drones here without taking too much damage from the Spore Crawler. But Hack is doing work on the Terran, man. He's taken down eight. Make that nine SCVs. He's going to get ten by the looks of it. And now the rocks are down too. So Startail is prepared. MVP, I don't think, did quite enough damage. I mean, this, this, this Banshee's been a nightmare. But honestly, Hack's Banshee's been even better. Keen is taking so much economic damage here. And he hasn't got an expansion ready. Here comes the fight. All right. Keen and Sniper have got to do the work now. The run by Hack goes all the way through. But... Sniper tries to intercept. He's, it's not enough. The Banshee is there to try and fend them off, but the Hellions are well on the way, and there is little defense here for Sniper to actually hold on against this. More damage being done, but here's the big fight. Can they do it? MVP have got to crush Curious now. If they don't do it, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. Most of the Lings are down. The Queens are going to get killed. It looks like this time around, especially with this angle, Keen is going to be able to do the damage here. In the meantime, though, Hack is getting the shots off. He's trying his best, and it looks like he might be able to- Oh, the clutch Evo Chamber from Sniper walls off and saves his drones, and Curious is going to now finally lose that army. Hack has been just wrecking his opponent here. Keen has taken so much damage to his economy. 18 kills with the Banshee, but Curious is pretty much gutted at this point, and Hack is- It's up to Hack, really, to save him. He's gonna bring the Banshee in to try and do it. Curious is down to five drones, and he is able to stay alive. He has stabilized, barely, but it's gonna be up to Hack to kind of babysit him for a while. Damage has been done to both sides, but Sniper is on one base lair because 2v2- Oh no, the rest of the drones! Hack not quite able to save them. 
Looks like Kyrus will try and micro against them, and he might save three. The rest may very well die. It's going to be up to Hack here, I think, to really make this work. Kyrus doesn't have a lot going for him right now. Raven's on the way up here. Keen doing more damage. Hack is able to fend that off, though, and... Hack's economy is, I mean, it's pretty good, He, but he do, he's only on one base. You know, he's actually oversaturated at this point. We've got an expansion coming down here for Sniper. The Startail guys are in a bit of trouble here. Hack does have a pretty powerful force. He's still sitting on seven Hellions. He's got a Raven, a Banshee, and two Vikings, which is absolutely awesome. He has a means to try and drive Keen back, but... I'm still very worried for him here. He's still showing no sign of wanting to expand. He just wants to sit on one base this entire time. He wants to wall off against Hellion run buys, and he wants to do the damage. And he finds himself Keen's Banshee. Doesn't kill it, but drives it down and says, you know what? I can fight this. I have the I have the means, but if Hack isn't careful, he will lose a lot of Hellions. Those Hellions are very precious right now. All right, the Banshee is dead. It is really now Hack versus what's left of Sniper's army versus what's left of Keen's army. Hack is in the stronger position, but he doesn't have any backup really from Curious. Curious is trying to reestablish his economy, and he's droning hard. He is getting back into this game. Hack's going to try and fight here. Auto turret comes down. Vikings focus down. Take out the Raven. Hack's going to... Oh, he doesn't lose his Raven! Now he loses his Raven. Somehow. The missile turret actually gets finished, if you can believe it. But the Vikings land and take it out. Hack looking to break through, but oh no! From behind, Keen with the flank, trying to take out the rest of those Hellions. It looks like he will be able to do it. And now it's Vikings fighting Lings and Hellions on the ground. He goes airborne right here to avoid it. But Hack's army did just get torn to pieces. He does have three Vikings and seven Hellions rebuilt, though. He does have another wave. He wasn't able to break his opponent. Really, really, really awesome heals actually going on. Just repairing that turret so fast. Really, really cool. Great run by by what's left of Curious. Uh, Curious is back in it. If you can believe it, he's got 14 drones. He's actually able to build stuff. And he is trying to take out a few drones here and there. He's not going to be able to get too much more done, but he did pick off a few. Keen now going for the run by. He says, oh, Curious is back up. I've got to stop that from happening. But Hack is ready. He is ready to go for it. And Curious is kind of not, doesn't want to fight that. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Bear in mind, Hack has blue flame. Yeah, Keen doesn't. So Hack actually, in the midst of all this, got this huge advantage in a Hellion on Hellion battle. Especially if his opponent just sticks on Lings. I've got to, yeah, I'm going to see Spire tech. I was going to say Sniper has got a tech now. Hack, because otherwise Hack's just going to stay on blue flame Hellions all game and win. All right, Hack has kept Curious alive for the time being. Curious is re-establishing his economy very, very slowly. He's just working on trying to build something up. He still has those two bases, and they're not mined out, not even close. So he can actually stay on two bases for a while. Great little run by by Curious. He gets a drone, gets some scouting information. He's going to go for the main. And this time around, he might actually get something. But no, he elects to actually fight just a little bit there. He's, takes out one drone. See if he can take out another. All right, well, the muters are on the way out. There's already three. Hack has got an opportunity here. He could fight these Hellions. He should fight these Hellions. He's in a great position to fight these Hellions. He takes out one. Nice and easy. But the Muters are here now, and that means that Hack is on the clock. Sniper is going to be able to push him back. Hack does actually have five Vikings, which is enough to fight this, especially with a Raven. So if Hack is able to stop the Muter flock before it gets really scary, he may be able to make this work. Curious is still re-establishing. Sniper has taken quite a lot of damage, but he is still on two base lair, and he has 23 drones. The economy of Keen, I mean, Keen is almost mined out. Keen has got to consider expanding. Or alternatively, he just pulls his command center and goes to his other base. The Viking count is good enough for Hack to actually drive these muters back, which is, you know, Vikings are generally not a good counter to mutalisks, but in small numbers, they can make it work. There's a Thor as well. Hack actually has an expansion too. Hack is just plowing forward. I mean, his economy is so good right now compared to his opponent. Keen looking for the run by, though. He wants to bury Curious forever. And knowing, of course, that Hack has had to pull back to defend here, this is going to be difficult. He does have a couple of Marines that are fighting. They do get taken out. Ling's coming in. Take out yet another one. That's nice. But Keen is moving in with this Banshee here. He's trying to do as much damage as possible. And the Muters are coming in as well. He, they want to finish off Curious. They realize they cannot allow him to reestablish. The Lings do break down the Hellions. But here's the problem. The main anti-air force of 
the, the, basically the defender here, you know, the guy who's still in this game, is very slow. However, Hack is moving out to fight. He wants to go for it, and he catches out the Muters. He takes out one. He's going to take out another. Sniper turning around. Not a good idea. Sniper's not having enough Muters to fight this. Not even close. And Sniper bleeds off down to three, and Hack is looking good. Ling run by little things that Curious is doing to help out here. He is being that little helper, and he's doing so much with just so little. And now Hack is going to go for it. And I think he's got the army he needs to break this down. The Ling run by is going to go into Keen's base to try and prevent that expansion. Huge amounts of Vikings. I, I don't know where the Thor is. It's, it's just limping in behind. Blue Flame Hellions, a Raven, and a Thor. Placement of the point defense drone right here to protect that. All of these air units going down. The Blue Flame Hellions find their way into the mineral line, and they do the damage. Landing the Vikings at this point, realizing, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to fight those meters. I'm getting on the ground, baby. I'm going to gun these guys down. Vikings very rarely get this opportunity, but they're doing it now. Landed Vikings are actually going to kill Sniper, if you can believe it. An attack with the Banshee comes in from the back, and it's going to do damage here, but I think that might be too little too late. More Blue Flame Hellions making their way over to... And they, oh, this is going to get absolutely gutted. The landed Vikings, the heroes of this match. Hacks Viking Micro against the Mutalisks. You never see this, but it is happening. Super is... The Sniper is going to die. Oh, man. Keen is able to fend this off for the time being, but that is going to be a dead sniper by the looks of it. This Thor, these landed Vikings are just having a field day. Sniper has very little going from here. He does... I don't know. He's still mining from this base. He's got to do something about that. I think Curious, Curious is looking for the run by here, but Curious should actually be going to bury what's left of Sniper, I think, at this point. Because, yes, the main is down, but the natural is mining. All right, it's okay. Hack brought a Thor. It's fine. Don't worry about it. He's going for it. What a mighty attack indeed. Okay, so now we're pretty much relying on Keen, who does... I mean, he doesn't have an economy anywhere close to Hacks, but he has expanded. The problem is he's pretty much mined out here as well. Curious. Zombie Curious comes back from the dead to punish the wicked. Curious is basically the crow here. He got thrown from the bell tower and now he's come back to kill those gangsters. And Hack is looking great. He's got exactly what he needs. Thors and mini Thors. Oh my. Sniper's dead. Sniper is dead and buried. There is nothing left of the great villain here. Sniper has not rebuilt his base. There's a drop coming in, however. And he wants to put Curious right back in the ground. And Keen might have enough units to make that work. Yep, he's certainly going to lose the main. Curious might be able to hold on to his natural with some Banelings. And reinforcements are coming back. Curious is bringing him around. What is Hack doing, you might wonder? Where is he going? Hack's 12 Vikings and 3 Thors, the, the most non-standard of compositions, coming in. Keen with the snipe takes out key tech structures. And Curious can, basically can't build any units now. So he is going to have to say, Oi, Hack, you need to come defend me now. Bring those units, bro. I need you. I need you right now. He's got Hellbats. He's got pretty much everything he needs. But I think maybe at this point, he just says, You know what, Curious? I'm just going to let you die. You're a good distraction. You're a good punching bag right here. I'm going to build up my army. I'm going to win this game right now. And he's got the units to make that happen. Absolutely. He's got so many Vikings. I mean, these dropships that Keen is using are going to get shut down pretty quickly. Sniper is doomed. Sniper has nothing left. He has four drones. He has no money. Oh, the Vikings! So good. The surround. Curious. He looks for it. He says, I'm not dead yet. He takes him out and Keen is losing the rest of his army. Startail. An incredible 2v2 performance right here. And Hack looks like he's going to put the nail in the coffin. Zombie Curious is still lurching around here looking for brains. Doesn't find an MC. But he will find himself a Keen. Keen getting himself some siege tanks here. He is protecting the four drones. They are here. They bring a bounty of minerals to their Terran protectors. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. Curious is still alive. If Curious still has Zerglings, Curious can fight. And he knows it. Hack is going to march the rest of his stuff across the map. He's got Hellbats. He has Thors, actually. I don't know why he's just not bringing his whole army here. Jesus, look at the size of that. Hack is terrifying. Hack's supply is better than Keen's significantly. It's better than Keen's plus Curious. He has what he needs here. Curious losing a few lanes. He's going to go for the run by here, which is going to get shut down pretty well. He needs to just wait. He needs to wait. The Hellbat drop is coming in. I think Curious is doing this on purpose. He's drawing the army away because the Hellbat drop is about to hit. 
And that's going to do so much. The tanks are coming into position. Here it is. The Hellbat drop comes in. There's the boost. Blue Flame Hellbats right into the center of the mineral line. The tank shots go off, but they kill more of Keen's SCVs, I think, than they do of anything else. Keen now down to 24 SCVs, mining from only one base here. Oh, so brutal. So brutal. But Hack is marching. He has a mech army. Yes, he is mecking. If you can believe it, with Thors and tanks and everything in a 2v2. This is what's left of Keen's army. He's gonna try and finish off Curious, but as we have seen, Curious does not die easily. Multiple shots to the head required in order to bury this walking dead. And Curious has got a fight. He's got Banelings. It, they don't do anything, but it's okay because the Hellbat drop comes in. Oh my god, it just destroys Keen's army in a matter of seconds. GG, what an awesome 2v2. Startail takes it in a fantastic performance. What a game. What a game. Hack so good. Curious so resilient. And Sniper so very, very dead. That was the best 2v2 I have ever seen. That was brilliant. Absolutely astonishing. 26 minute 2v2. Startail comes back from the brink after taking basically Curious dying completely and Hack saying, you know what? I can do it. And he fights both. He fights both with a little help from his friends. What a great game. Startail is up two games to one up against MVP. All right. The next matchup, we're going back to the 1v1s now. I know it's kind of disappointing, isn't it? Keen and Hack are going to be going at it again. Revenge possible for MVP here on Neo Caro, a TBT between two incredible Korean players. We'll see you shortly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft Clan Wars. This is what the scoreline looks like right now. It is, this is wild already, folks. We have a 2-1 lead in favor of Startail as Hack just goes absolute man mode on Sniper and Keen and Curious refusing to die. So good, so good. And now we've got a TBT between Hack and Keen. So immediately, Keen can actually get revenge here. I don't know who to call on this one. They're both really, really great TBTers, honestly. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. It should be an absolutely awesome match. So far, this has been a great series between these two teams. And we're only on match four. You know, this could go all the way to the ace. I am I'm psyched. I'm really, really happy to see that. It's going to be absolutely awesome. All right, so Keen versus Hack. Who do you rate on the TBT front? Well, Keen has played a lot less competitively as of late, you know, in big televised matches. But he has won the two games that he has played, in fact. So, yeah, it's worth bearing that in mind. You know, so his form looks, for the most part, pretty good versus Terran at present. Historically, it's also been pretty good as well. So, he comes off recent victories against people like Marzo. He comes off recent victories against people like Turn. But, here's the thing. Last year, he did lose 2-0 to Hack. So, that's worth bearing in mind. I would never mess with Hack's 2v2. So, you know, I might give him the slight edge going into this. Frankly. So, we will see how it goes. Alright. We just don't have much chance to see a lot of Keen, really. It's surprising. You'd think, oh, you know, in Pro League. But the, his only recent TBT Pro League match was actually against Ty, who he lost to. Which is, I mean, it's Ty. It's going to happen. Uh, that's a, that's an underdog match, certainly. Even as good as Keen is. But, oh. This is going to be great. Let's see who picks it up. I think maybe I give a slight edge to Hack. Just in terms of history between these two guys. But we'll see. To the southwest position, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue trucks playing Terran, it's Startail Hack. Versus his opponent to the northeast position. In the red trunks, also playing Terran, MVP Keen. AKA the commander. AKA the guy whose gif has gone around the world, completely out of context in many scenarios. It's true, it, it has happened. He has... He's become famous. And people don't even know it half the time. They don't even know what, what is being played, who Keen is, but it's a gif that gets used now just for general gaming conversation. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Keen is very super famous. Even though most people do not know he exists. All right. Let's see what you can do, Hack. You already just absolutely trained these guys earlier in the arts of war when it comes to 2v2. 
suplexed both Sniper and Keen upon his mighty back. But will he be able to fight 1v1 against a player of Keen's caliber? We'll find out. Gas first play here from Hack. Interesting. Okay. Generally means Banshee, but not always. Yeah. It can mean some kind of really crazy quick mech build. It could mean Blue Flame Hellion of Two Factory. That's also a possibility. It, remember the gas first build? You remember all the way back in the day, the Wings of Liberty Slayers days, where the Slayers brought this build to MLG and no one could bloody well beat it? Except, for, of course, for MVP, but, you know. It was kind of great to watch. It was absolutely fantastic to watch. But it's not been so common lately. You know, usually this just means Banshee at this point, and it lines up so well too, you know, you can, because Cloak Banshee is a lot cheaper these days, it's much easier to do. Okay, Reaper first, N again, not, not great in TBT, you know, going Reaper openings can be dangerous, it's possible to get your Reaper shut down very easily, it also means your factory's up a lot later. But it does give you that crucial scouting information, and Hack will probably not have enough Marines to defend this off initially. And in fact, Keen is even going to scout with an SCV as well. Because I, I have a feeling he's thinking, okay, I need to know what my opponent's doing. If my opponent's going like two Reaper, oh, is Hack going to get it? He almost did. That was some fancy footwork there from Hack. If my opponent's going two Reaper, then I need to know that. Because if I send one Reaper, then my Reaper dies and then I'm in real trouble. But Keen knows it's safe. He's going to follow up with another Reaper after that SCV got some scouting information. He did see the factory go down. And based on the timing of the factory, and he probably got to click the gas as well, he should know that he's fine here. Nice free pickup for Keen. Hack sending that SCV out. I think that Hack believed that his opponent had knock on Reaper because he saw the SCV scout. You usually don't see both. But in this case, Hack is going to go for a Widow mine. I, I I still think, especially with the second gas coming down, that this is Banshee. Because you can build the Widowmine, still build the tech lab, and it'll still be around the time that you need it to be. But and it could be a Widowmine drop. If you build a second Widowmine, it's most likely going to be a drop. I assume we'll probably see tech lab go down. He may decide to go for... Ooh, here we go. There's the fight. He almost gets both of the Reapers, actually. Hack with a, a nice little position there. It is going to be a Widowmine drop, by the looks of it. Probably four Marine, two Widowmine, which is a... Oh, lovely shot down there. Admittedly, it does give information to Keen. It's like, hang on a minute, hang on. Complete. He didn't scout the starport. Uh, he may not recognize that this is a possibility here. It's like, oh, we got a defensive Widowmine. Okay, well, if he'd seen the starport, he'd say, hang on a minute, there's no way. There's no way that you're pulling a, a four Marine two Widowmine drop on me. That's not going to happen. It's actually going to be a three Marine two Widowmine drop because one did die earlier. But it's a quite an early hot build. And it became quite popular, especially in this matchup. It did a lot of damage. And it can work in other positions as well. I kind of like it against Zerg, actually. It works fairly well as long as you don't get surrounded very early. But Keen's got his own Widowmine. He is patrolling around the place. And yeah, I think he smells something at this point. He knows... He does know something. But this is the cool thing. This is a delayed Banshee follow-up. I did say I thought the Banshee would come in regardless. Yeah, nice place to pop that Widowmine. It's going to prevent that from happening. The Reaper is maybe going to see that Widowmine. Nope, it doesn't. Okay. And here comes the drop. And Keen is now moving into position. He doesn't have Stim, of course. So definitely a possibility that something could be done here. Widowmine shot goes off. It was nicely hidden. Oh, the counter Widowmine, though. Yeah, that could have worked, actually. That's the cool thing about that Widowmine drop, is if it actually... Oh, this is going to be ugly. He might even lose that, but I think he's going to boost out of there safely. This is prevented, though, so that's nice. And there's the cleanup. The thing about the Widowmine is if it hits the Marines, then a medevac set of Marines, even if it's inferior numbers, against no combat shield, no stim, actually does work. It, you can actually win that fight. But unfortunately, the counter widow mine is what did him in. Otherwise, that probably would have been a one fight and then SCV damage done before the remainder of the Marines came in to clean up. There's the scan, takes out the widow mine. Keen's expansion delayed quite heavily, and the Banshee follow up is unexpected. There is no engineering bay down, and all the scans have already been used on the widow mines. It's like, there's two left at this point. But the Banshee is going to come in and try to do some damage here. There's the cloak going off pretty much immediately. And he, he does have to be careful about where he positions here. Of course, Keen doesn't want to scan right now. One, he needs the mules. Secondly, he doesn't want to scan because he knows he can't kill the Banshee. One Viking isn't enough. You've got to kind of herd your opponent. He does have this Raven up, though. 
and he's actually building a second raven, which you generally don't see. It's very interesting, but he may need it, considering there's another Banshee coming in. And of course, if Hack elects to play mech, he's going tanks now. He might. Oh, he's only building marines off this. He's got no marine tech at all. So it looks like Hack does want to make this marine tank push with Banshee. So it's it's kind of a Neo 1-1-1. But he is expanding behind it, and he may transition out to mech afterwards. So you know, having the Ravens here for Keen will actually be pretty good. Oh, that's a very good way of... Looks like, yeah, he actually did cancel that second Raven, so I guess it was just a mistake. Even having one Raven is pretty good, though. There's the Banshee. It does survive the Widowmind shot, of course, and that's that's ugly because if that Banshee gets scanned now, it will die. But the push is at the front right now, and that, that failed. I'm not sure what Hack was really trying to do there. He went into a fortified position and just died. So he's going to have to pull back with his Banshee now. Three Banshees available here for Hack, though, so, I mean, that is quite a lot, and there aren't many Marines on the ground. There are a couple of Vikings up, and it looks like, oh, will Keen spot it? He He's on its tail, so unless Hack jukes him pretty hard, which I, I think he might actually lose it. Yeah, it looks like Hack might be able to get back in time, but with these couple of Banshees, I mean, they're already doing more damage, and he's going for a, no, he's not going for another one. Keen's going for one now. He might be able to break this position, but I don't know. After losing that initial push, I don't think so. All right, Keen is, is trying to hunt the Banshee down. He's trying to find it, and he fails, unfortunately. It's, it's hidden. It's actually all the way across there. It could still happen, but it's going to get some... Oh, no, 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 no! Oh! oh, so close. So close. Keen going to mess out, miss out on that one. Unfortunate for Keen. If it caught that, that would have been great, but it gets out, and it's going to get fixed up now. So, Hack is now expanded. What's he going to do? Well, he is not playing mech. He's going to play marine tank out of this. And his opponent is also playing marine tank. And is looking for another barracks to be added on there as well. Keen's going to push out. And he's going to push again into a fortified position. But Keen's going to see this fortified position because that banshee's up there. So Keen has a better shot at getting into a good spot. It's not a fight that I'd want to take. Especially with this banshee not being available to contribute here. Hack's bringing in his own banshees to fight. Man, it looks like that that other one must have been caught, which is crazy. I'm very surprised that happened. Here's the cloak, and there's very little anti-air, only a few marines. That's not going to be enough, and hack with the pickup here, but that's going to allow Keen to push forward. There are a couple of siege tanks in position here. Cloak Banshee versus Cloak Banshee in the Battle of the Weird, but there are enough units here for hack to throw this back. Strangely enough, though, Keen can actually kill pretty much any everything. He's going to lose these tanks regardless. And Keen brings the reinforcements in. And because there was a lack of anti-air, suddenly we're in a situation where Hack, who had a surefire win in that fight, is now being pushed backwards. He is repairing. The Banshee is going to die. There's a second cloak Banshee here for Hack. That's going to die as well. Hack with the hot pickup loses the tank as well. Keen with the siege position. And the SCV's off the line. Oh my, oh my. Hack bringing that drop back and is looking to pull, push this back. He should be able to without taking huge losses. Yeah, not too many workers killed. Hack still killed more than Keen, shockingly enough. That was a pretty effective defense. So nice play there by Hack. And another Banshee goes down as well. And Keen, yeah, Keen is not in a position to attack now. That was really dicey for a moment. The Banshee of Keen was doing so much. And it was picking off tanks. Hack lost maybe one or two more tanks than he should have. He he was able to do the hot pickup on a couple, but then he got his medevac shot down by Vikings because Hack just didn't have that air superiority. But now, Hack has army superiority in a big way. What he doesn't have is combat shield. The combat shield is on the way, and plus one is on the way here for Keen. So I do wonder if Hack actually wants to attack. I think he'll just drop at this point, I don't think he wants to go into a full-on commitment. He doesn't have that overwhelming lead that you need to really be able to do that. And honestly, against the two-base Terran here, I think he has to wait for the third to go down. And that's what the battle is really going to be about. Because this third is vulnerable to siege tanks. It's vulnerable to drops. Hack will push out on the map to try and secure control. Maybe pull his opponent's army out of position. Will then attempt to do a drop. I, I mean, this drop is probably not getting much done here. Especially since Keen looks like he, Yeah, he's going to place a missile turret right, right, right where he needs to. Which is just ideal. So this is going to get spotted. Of course, the SCB will, will get killed. And the missile turret will get cancelled as well. But the drop gets spotted. And it's going to get shut down. There's already a tank in position. So Hack loses a couple of marines and backs off. But... 
he is also just shocking around at the front of the base. Does he have what he needs to break it? Yeah, I mean, he does, actually. I don't think he realizes that he does, but he does. That most of the Marines are not there. And as a result of this drop defense, Keen's army is out of position. And Hack actually has a real opportunity to break this front here. Especially if he's able to get good shelling. He's firing for effect. He's going to kill the bunker before the repairs happen. Hack has a... He, he might... He might be able to, you know, he might be able to make this happen, but he has given Keen an opportunity. Thing is, Keen is still guarding his main. He's saying, I, I don't, I believe that this is a fake. I really believe you're going to drop it. It's not true. Okay, maybe it is true, but he doesn't have enough Marines to hold it back. This is a doom drop going in here, and he's going to drop all the tanks right on top of it, and there's a big drop into the center here. The siege is now up. I wonder if that was the right move. I still think pressuring the front was maybe the better idea, but all the tanks are going to die here. Keen is losing quite a bit. Hack's going to lose a lot too, though. He's going to lose two medevacs minimum. So I guess that wasn't the right move here for Hack, but he still has a lead. He's got a bigger army. He's now going to do a booster drop right on top of Keen's tanks and a stim forward. What a beautiful combination. There's the one-two punch, but it's not enough. Keen is smart on the defense, and Hack is messing it up here, really. And I think the pressure on the front would have been a much better idea. He had a real opportunity to break that front. And he went for a doom drop instead, and it didn't do what he needed it to. And now army supply has evened up a bit. Hack still has the lead, but it's nowhere near that dominant lead that he had earlier. So I, I am a bit worried for Hack here. Keen is going to go for a fight in the center of the map here. Stim forward, picks off one medevac. It's a lot of stim, though. He does want to watch out for that. He still want to go for it. He wants to try and get that tank, but no, it's not going to happen. Absolutely not. Upgrades-wise, Hack is on fairly even footing with Keen, but Keen does have a bit of a lead and is going for plus two. So the armory is already up. Where is the armory? There isn't one, as far as I am aware, for Hack right now. If he's got one, he's hidden it pretty well. No, he has no armory. That's actually a pretty big deal. The longer Hack goes on here, the worse it's going to be for him. The third is already established here for Keen. He is mining from it. He has a significant worker lead. Hack must do damage. He has failed several drops already. He's got to think about sieging the third base. And he's got to do it effectively, too. I'm a bit worried. Hack was ahead for a while, but Keen is back in this in a big way. He wants that revenge. And he is looking like he might be able to make that happen. Keen is going to push out across the map here. He's working on his second upgrade. Still no armory. Hack... This, uh, uh, this drop that he's doing right now... Oh, is he going to... Did he just run right into that scan? Did he do that on purpose? Surely not. He kind of... I don't know. Maybe he did. Yeah, he did kind of show that. And I wonder if he's done... If he did that on purpose. He kind of said, Oh, I'm going to the scan. I'm going to the scan. He's trying to fake him out. And you'll notice the Keen doesn't know where to go right now. And he's moving most of his army out to the third base. I think if Hack wants to do this Doom Drop, he's got to do it now. Especially before these missile turrets go up. So he's going to go for it. He is boosting forward. And a force of Keen is going to meet up with Hacks. Hack does have the army to... Actually, he doesn't. He doesn't have enough medevacs to make that work. But here's the big drop. And now this has got to work for Hack. He's got to make this happen. He's going to camp production facilities. It's looking pretty good. Keen is going to siege on the side here. And he's actually going to kill a number of Marines as a direct result. And Keen is now moving in. And Hack's fire is not good enough. It's not. He's not actually good on the target fire here. But Keen just doesn't quite have enough. And this Doom Drop is doing damage, but Hack has invested a lot into it. He has got to make this work. Still those two tanks available. Again, I think that Hack could have engaged a little bit better. I think maybe Hack needs... Yeah, I think Hack needs to leave now. No, right now. He could have picked up that tank, I think, but... He is now going to go for the third base, and he did what he needed to do. He drew his opponent out of position, and then he killed the third base. And strangely enough, Hack never built a third. He has been doing two base terrain. He's only mining on one base right now, and he's way behind in terms of upgrades. He didn't kill the third base. He's now engaging into this, and he's going to lose this fight. He has done significant damage to his opponent, but I'm still worried because Hack is now behind in terms of upgrades in a big way, and he's not taking that third. He's got to lift this off. He's going to do that, and I think, yeah, he's going to move it down here. That's a good place to put it, I think. I don't know. I still don't think that's enough damage. Yeah, it seems significant, and it is. You know, he wiped out a lot of the production of Keen. Uh, Keen only has one factory up here. He lost a lot of barracks. So even if he had a good economy, which he actually doesn't right now because he lost that third base location, so he's still only mining for one base here, he wouldn't be able to make anything happen with it. And Keen is looking for the third base. Like, all right, I know the third base has got to be here, and it's not. It's actually elsewhere. It's down here, out of the way, which is a great position from Hack. He knew Keen would attempt to find this base, 
and it's not there. But Keen is going to try and attack the natural at this point, and this is a devastating counterattack here, and Hack is going to pick up. Is he going to go back? He's going to Doom Drop again. He's going to go for it, and the base trade scenario is now in full effect here. All the SCVs are going to die. This base is gone, and we are in a weird, funky base trade right now. There's a lot of SCVs here, though. They're going to die, of course, but they're going to kill a lot of units, too, and I think Hack has made the wrong call, and Keen... He's got the killer instinct. He's going to make this happen here. This tank might die, but I think Hackers, he's bungled it. He really went for a lot of Doom Drops. He was obsessed with the idea, and I think it was it was not a terrible idea. But right now, this third is still up. A GG, he realizes it, and Keen, in a very back-and-forth TBT, takes a solid win there. Oh, man, and I really think Hack could have had it. Several opportunities. He got a little bit too cocksure. He, instead of sieging the front and breaking the front, he didn't do it. He went for the Doom Drop, and it failed. He went for another Doom Drop. It did damage, but he lost a lot. And then the base trade came in, and I mean, that was that. He decided, oh, right, I've got to go for it. And all the SCVs got preemptively pulled by Keen. He's like, oh, I, I realize what he's doing. I have a sensor tower. I can see where he is. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to attack him. I'm going to fight him in the base with my SCVs, and I don't think he's got enough units. And Keen was completely right. Absolutely fantastic play. It wraps us up to two games to two, folks. We have a very even clan war going on. The next match, something I've certainly been looking forward to. It's going to be Billowy versus Pet. It's going to be a great ZBP, and it's going to be on Neo Jungle Valley. So, again, I hope that Pet has a good idea for this, because this is not traditionally a very good Zerg map. You've got to have some cool ideas to make it work here. Let's see if he can do it. You're watching Shoutcraft Clan Wars sponsored by MLG TV. We'll be right back after the break. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft Clan Wars. Here is the current scoreline. It is really close. Two games to two between these guys. And we're going to be seeing a Zerg versus Protoss on Neo Jungle Valley between Pet and Billowy. That's going to be the next matchup here. I'm looking forward to this one. Pet's been playing out of his mind in the Clan Wars. Really, really good. Billowy's been playing great as well. So this should be a really good match between these two. Billowy confirms ready. We're going to see if Pet is ready, and then we'll get right into it. So Neo Jungle Valley traditionally has been a very unfriendly map for Zerg, but we have seen them win on it. But they generally have to play quite unconventionally. And I think that, in fact, well, Neo Jungle Valley was the first map we ever saw in Clan Wars. It was Yonghua taking on Jadong, and Jadong got stomped really hard. And it was it was obvious, really, I think, from that, that Yonghua had prepared for the map and Jadong had not. So, I'm going to see if Pet is ready to go. There's a lot of things Protoss can do. Protoss like to play very Stargate heavy on this map. They can also play Blink Stalker very effectively here. So that's something that Pet will need to watch out for. And the problem is that Zerg really likes to go three hatch before pool on this map. So it is entirely possible to die to a two base all in if you're not careful. So let's see what happens. Okay, let's see how greedy Pet gets. We have seen some really cool two base Nidus and things like that. So I wonder if Pet will try and do something along those lines or whether he'll just go for the three hatch before pool. I guess we'll find out. Here we go, Neo Jungle Valley. The semi island map will be the next game in this absolutely phenomenal series between these two. I mean, this has already been one of my favorite clan wars so far, and we're only on game five. So I do dearly, dearly hope that it stays that way. All right, folks, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Neo Jungle Valley. It's my pleasure to bring you in the southeast position in the yellow trunks playing Protoss, MVP Billowy, versus his opponent to the northeast position in the pink trunks playing Zerg. It's Startail Pet. Pet doesn't get a lot of recognition. Maybe it's because he has a name that sounds very non-threatening. So so is Billowy, to be fair. Is, is Billowy something that you would be threatened by? No. Not especially. It's like, oh, there's a, there's a breeze. Bit of a breeze. Get a Billowy. It's blowing up my skirt. That's what you would think of. And Pet, well... No one's ever going to be intimidated by a pet. I wonder what kind of pet he is. You know, he strikes me as a hamster. Very small. Very, very adorable. Kind of your first... Your first pet. But my god. And I can tell you this from experience. They could sink their teeth into a finger really deep and they will never bloody well let go. I still have a scar them this day. From Henry the Hamster. Who I got when I was like 10 years old. 
That little bastard. He lasted till three and a half as well, which is very, very old for a hamster. But that little bastard just got a hold of my finger and he would not let go. He, he did not know whose side he was on half the time. I'll tell you that for a fact. So I imagine Pet's kind of like that. He's vicious. All right. So let's see what Billowy can do. Billowy has played on this map before. He did play against another Protoss. He played against Blisk. Unfortunately, Blisk's incredible crazy build was just not quite enough to beat him. That, that was an amazing match to watch, I've got to say. Will Pet go three hatch before pool? Let's find out. If he builds pool or gas in the next few seconds, then we know the answer. In the meantime, it's going to be next first here for Billowy, which is fine. Some players will elect to go for earlier Stargate instead of going for that Nexus, and Pet is absolutely going to go three hatch before pool here. Why not? So, very, very greedy builds out of both sides, and you can do it. Why can you do it? Because you can't get at your opponent. It's a semi-island, folks. There's no way. Look, have a look around. Can you see an obvious way through? You'll say, oh, Total Biscuit, I know where. You just go here. Oh, rocks. Yep, every single one of those entrances blocked off by rocks. It is a semi-island. So once the rocks are down, it'll become more like a regular map. I'm a bit surprised. Well, I mean, Pet hasn't scouted yet, so this was the problem with scouting on this map is that he could be in two, he could be in three other places, right? He could be cross, he could be up here, or he could be down here, and that means that the place you take your third as a zerg could potentially be in range of the Protoss, and that is unfortunately the gamble Pet took with three hatch before pool. And he's, I mean, he's going to be kicking himself. He's checked cross position. He finds nothing. And he's going to be saying, oh, no. I've established my third base right where the Protoss could be. You can get Blink Stalkers or just normal Stalkers up on this, on this ramp here. Hell, you can cannon the top. It's really hard to deal with. So I have a feeling that Pet is going to be a little annoyed when he finds out that this is the case. He's like, oh, oh, he's going to be over there. Surely he's going to be over there. Uh-uh, I'm afraid not. So this could be tricky. It's not indefensible, but it's very difficult to deal with. So a bit sad for Pet here. He did roll the dice on his expansion placement. He could have put it either here or here. And unfortunately, he, he got the wrong one. But never mind. I'm sure he'll be okay. It's It'll be difficult for him to be okay, but he can be okay. He's now open to all sorts of nonsense, like Mothership Call Harass from the top here. Stargate Harass is going to be a problem. And once... The thing is, like, Billowy doesn't know yet where his opponent is. He's going to find out with the Mothership Core. He's going to run... I don't know, he might go cross first. Uh, I don't think he will. I imagine he'll just go right up there. And he will see that third base, and then he's going to be like, Oh, great, free drones. And he might be able to pick off one or two before the Queen kind of drives him away. Oh, he's, yeah, he's actually scouting all the way across. This is a weird comedy of errors, isn't it? So, neither of these guys have any idea where the opponent is. I mean, Pet has to know now because he's scouted the other position, so he's got to know his opponent's down there. But Billowy is going to miss him. He's not going to find his opponent till like, the eight-minute mark, which is hilarious. Well, there you go. Okay, well, so where's Pet going from here? He has a strong economy, of course. Now he's going off three hatcheries. It's... If a, you know, a Zerg player would just love to go three hatcheries in every possible situation where, where they can, but they're generally not allowed to do it. Billowy scouts, he knows, oh, okay, right, there's no creep there. That's clearly not where he is. And he will scout across the map, and by the looks of it, he will go all the way over here, and he will be spotted. So, you know, about the seven and a half minute mark is when Billowy will actually figure out where his opponent is. It's cannon on the way up. Pet looking for the scout immediately meets the Phoenix. So Pet is going to, you know, that's actually the information he really needed. He knows his opponent's got Phoenix, and he's most likely going to be continuing to build it. He scouts the Stargate. He sees more Phoenix building out of it, so that's good. And Billowy has not actually even scouted his opponent. He's, he still hasn't seen him, so I guess my eight-minute prediction was right. Billowy's heading across the map, and he's going to say, oh, he's, you're not there either. Okay. And Pet, knowing now where his opponent is, is going to get a Spore Crawler up in this mineral line before his opponent is able to get there with Phoenixes, which is just ideal. Really good position here for Pet. Surprising considering the position of this. But there are plenty of risks. There's a Pro Bowl on the way out here for Billowy. There's all sorts of really horrible things that can happen. And really, yeah, Pet's actually realized he needs Overlords here to keep an eye on the top. Because a Pylon could come down here for a Zealot Warp In. A Pylon could come down for Cannons. Double Stargate coming out here from Billowy. He's going for it. He's actually going for Blisk's build, strangely enough. 
Blisk actually went for a, a, a attempted triple Stargate play on this map, but didn't quite do the job. But I think it'll do the, it'll certainly do the job here. There's the quick lift. Going to be able to get a couple of drones. I mean, there's so many drones being produced, it doesn't really make that much difference. Strangely enough, Billowy actually has more probes. He's not showing... Yeah, he's, I mean, he's already got his third base up. So I think that's pretty much as many probes as he'll want at this point. And he's got a powerhouse economy behind this as well. And you know, what is Pet's option? Pet's going for Hydras. But what's he going to do with them? He can knock down the front. That can happen. In fact, he's already working through it. So he's going to go Ling Hydra for a while. I, I don't know. I kind of like this. I, it could, absolutely could work. Although, you've got to get a lot of Hydras before you make this happen. And with so many Stargates down and a continued dedication to Phoenix production... Billowy can go in there, just snag up a lot of Hydralisks and kill them very quickly. You've got to have a big mass, backed up by Queens, in order to make that work. Moving his way around, trying to do some damage. Nice pickup here by Billowy. Really precise. Shaves off a Hydralisk. They're still working their way through, though. Pet wants to make this happen. He's getting those muscular augments. Does he have the range upgrade yet? He... don't believe he does, actually. Oh, man, he missed an opportunity there to take a couple of shots. Overseer comes in just to keep an eye on it, and this is going to be broken down now pretty quickly. I don't know if Pet has enough Hydras with him, but I think he's getting to that point. There are 11 Phoenix. There's so few ground units, and it's kind of up to the Phoenix to get really good grabs, kill the Hydras quickly, and get out before the, before they die. And that could become a real problem. And I don't, Maybe Billowy just doesn't quite have enough Phoenix to make this work, although this is risky. I don't like this from Pet at all. But it looks... Is it, no, he's not going to get away with it. I, I, I think Pet may have just thrown this just on that basis alone. But I don't know. There's, a, there's still a lot of links. Billowy does have a lot. But I, this is the problem. Now, if you split your Hydras up, then the Phoenixes can come in and kill a lot of them. And now, Pet's got naked Hydras. But he does have a lot of them still. So he's continuing to push forward. Bear in mind, this is a big three-base economy. He does have to try and kill the Protoss' third base somehow. Because otherwise, the Protoss will be able to just power ahead in terms of units here. But I, I'm, it's unfortunate the pet decided to do that because he lost a lot of hydras. Like 13 hydras have gone down already. He lost probably a good eight of them in that attack, and he shouldn't have. Like that should not have happened. But there's now a huge amount of phoenixes to the point where he's going to be able to lift up so many hydralisks and should be able to devastate this army. As you can see, and he's not going to lose too many phoenixes either. In fact, he's not going to lose any phoenixes. You see what I mean? Phoenixes are a good counter to hydra, and now I think pet is in a horrible spot. He needed to do damage with that attack. That initial engagement there, Billowy caught him out. He killed him off. He took a chunk of the Hydras out, and you've got to fight as a big group. That's the only way you win against this. And now there's 14 Phoenix on the field. That's enough to lift up and kill pretty much any Hydras. It's more, more Phoenixes than Hydralisks, which is a nightmare scenario. Now he's going for Warp Prism. He's getting Charging Zealots as well, which is, again, a great answer to Hydras. A lot of good answers to Hydras here. And Billowy sees the army moving around, and he pulls back before anything can happen. Pet doesn't actually have any vision in the sky either, so what Billowy can do is he can exploit these little cliff areas right here to keep most of his phoenixes out of shooting distance, which is awesome. And any attempt to bring an overseer in will just be shot down immediately. These are plus one phoenixes, and there's lots of them. All right, Void Ray's now on the way. I think Pet is... I, I don't see where Pet's going from here. He's trying to get plus two up. He's brought his Hydras out. He almost got that Warp Prism. That would be a great way to get back into this game if he could. But Billowy, too solid here, is able to maneuver around. The Queens are coming in to support, but I don't think he's going to win this fight. I don't. I really don't. There's so many. And there, there are Hydras coming in to reinforce. A decent amount of Hydras here. Here's the lifts, but the Charging Zealots are making their way in. And they're going to be able to obliterate this army very, very easily. And I think you can see that... Zealot Phoenix just destroys Queen Hydra, and this is going to be it. There's no way. No way. Pet's going to get buried. He, he has no other tech path. He dedicated to Hydralisks, and that was that. The War Prism drop is here. It's doing economic damage, and now Billowy just runs over his opponent with an excellent build, excellent strategy, more than doubling his opponent's army supply, and Pet just gets whacked. And with the Void Rays coming in behind this, no way. And Pet realizes it. There's the GG and MVP on match point right here. We're going to take some revenge for the drubbing they received in Pro League. Great play by Billowy. Rock solid. I'll give some credit to Pet. I think the build was good. I think the engagement wasn't. 
splitting the hydras up was maybe the worst thing he could have done. He lost so many hydras. If he kept them all together and fought, he could have killed the third. I think that Billowy would not have been able to fight that, and he would not have been able to keep his phoenixes either. And then that game would have turned around. But he made he made a mistake. He went around the top there, and he lost his hydralisks. And that, as they say, was that. All right, folks. Here we are. We are on match point. It's going to be a TVT, or sorry, a PVP, to decide whether or not we go to the ace. It's going to be Tails, MVP Tails, taking on a veteran. Startail Trickster, a.k.a. SKS. Is SKS back in form? Tails is on fire right now. Tails is looking really good. Can SKS beat him, or will MVP be able to take that 4-2 victory against Startail? We'll find out after the break. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next match is about to begin. Will MVP be able to take it? Will they take it four games to two, or will Startail force the ace match? It comes down to a PvP between two very old-school players. These guys have been around since the dawn of time. SKS, a.k.a. Trickster. This is a guy that started playing StarCraft II, did his two years military service, then came back and played more StarCraft II. That's how long he's been around. This guy was in the original GSL. The original, the very first. And Tails, of course, has been around for just as long, really. I remember casting Tails back, must have been three plus years ago, at the i 40 it was I-43 event in Somnialand 43. It was the IPL4 qualifier back then in the UK. And Tails played against Stefano in the final. And Stefano beat him. Simple as that. All right. SKS confirms he is ready. Confirming that Tails is ready. And we'll get into it. PvP on new Polaris Rhapsody has happened a lot. Uh, it's generally one base blink. Not always, but from what we've seen thus far on this map, that's a pretty popular build. Blink's a good, good choice for a map where lava can come and murder you. And there are all sorts, it's a very wide open base as well, so there's a lot of blink potential going on there. You can micro very well in your opponent's main, you don't get stuck on SimCity so easily. I'm uh, just going to wait for Tails to confirm that he's actually ready, and then we can get in. I don't want to start the game without him being prepared. That would absolutely suck. Thank you to those of you who have stayed up. It is, of course, 11 at night here on the East Coast. It is 8 p.m. on the West Coast. Then, of course, in Korea, it's midday. So it's a good time for these guys. A little bit late for me, unfortunately. I've been up since 6, I think. So I'm a bit tired. So my apologies if my casting is a little bit off today, more so than usual at any rate. I just want to make sure Tails is ready. He's not responded yet, so I don't want to start the match until I'm absolutely 100% sure that he's here. Because that would be... That would be bad. That would be bad. It's been a great clan war up to this point, though. If you've missed any of it, then do catch it on the rerun. And, of course, you can see it over at youtube.com slash totalbiscuit. That'll all be available as an all-in-one VOD, spoiler-free. And I do... Oh, okay, cool. Tails is ready. And disconnected from the lobby. Crap. Okay. Gonna have to remake the game, unfortunately, because we have a lobby problem. This is the second time today we've had that. It's unfortunate. For those of you who don't know, this will be the last clan war of the month. We will have, hopefully, this is the plan anyway. I'm not promising it, but we're looking at 10 next month. Lots of European friendly time slots, lots of good weekend time slots. It should be good for everybody, I hope. Oh, and Tails just went offline. Okay, he's probably just relogging. Yeah, it looks like he is. Okay, cool. Alright, we should be able to bring him back in now, and hopefully everything will be absolutely fine. Snartail and MVP. Great. All right, will it go to the ace match? It might. Okay, let's go. Countdown has now begun. New Polaris Rhapsody will be the location for the potential final map of this series and the final map of the month. But it could go to an ace. It could still go to an ace. Wrecking Ball is waiting in the wings as a real possibility, and I'm looking forward to that hopefully happening. I'd love to see some more Terran action. I'd like to see Hack come out again. I'd love to see Keen come out again. Dongwei Gu is not on the list today. You never know, he might come out as an ace, it's possible. So far MVP would be doing fine without him though. 
So we'll see where it goes. Okay. New Polaris is loading up. Will we see anything other than one base blink? It's been so popular on this map, and it makes sense. You know, it's well set up for that kind of thing. JYP has had ridiculous success with it up to this point. As have many other Protoss players. We might see something different. Let's see. All right, folks, here we go. The veteran. The veteran. Been around since the dawn of StarCraft 2. In the pink trunks, playing Protoss to the northwest. It is SKS. Playing for Startail, and he used to be known as Trickster. Versus his opponent to the southeast position. In the orange trunks, also playing Protoss. MVP Tails. Who has been on a tear of late. Tails, I think, has, has been considered for a long time to be a really, really cheesy player. And understandably so. But lately, his performance has been really good. I've been very impressed. If go and have a look at his Oligolac, you'll see that there's uh, a lot of great stuff going on there. He's been winning a lot of games. He looks like he's getting right back into form, which is awesome. SKS, I can't really speak too much to his form right now. We did see him play. He played previous, I think it was a, yeah, he played a PvP, I'm pretty sure, on Neo Jungle Valley. And unfortunately, he was not quite up to the task. He didn't manage to win it. I think he was playing against Yonghua, maybe. Or something along those lines. It was definitely against another Protoss player. Might have been from Incredible Miracle. And unfortunately, SKS didn't quite have it in him, but... I feel like he could. I do genuinely think that he he could get right back into form. Against a player like Tails, I think he's got a good shot at this. And if he can take it to the ace for Startail, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be absolutely fantastic for him if he can manage that. So we will see if he can. Hopefully he can. Tails, on the other hand, going for the double gas opening right here. Nice. Nothing wrong with that. I love how both players just scouting the corner just to make sure they didn't. Because this is entirely possible, by the way. An early probe can actually come in, and it can go around the edge and not be seen, because this is a very large main. Yeah? So, it it can happen. So, both players scouted there for proxies, which is really important. You could have all sorts of nonsense going on there. It's a prime position for a proxy gate, which is why all these product players are scouting it to make sure it's not there. Double Gas is also a PFSKS. He is currently mining 5, whereas Tails is also mining 5, actually. So, we're looking at mirror builds right now. I wonder if we will see that continue. It's a, it's a good amount of gas for Blink Stalkers. I gotta say, it's entirely possible. <laughs> we may very well see it. Now it's three in each, though. Could still be Blink Stalkers. There's another gateway coming down here for SKS, which is kind of indicative of Blink Stalkers. You want to start getting that Stalker count up. You want to maybe get an, a little early victory, catch a pro, maybe catch an enemy Stalker. If your opponent goes Zealot, you want to be able to punish that nice and easily. Gives you that flexibility here. What is Tails going to do, though? Okay, so he has a pylon right at the back. This is perfect for hiding a Twilight Council. But it might not be. Now, yeah, it could still be DTs. I'd say it could still be a Stargate, but it's not that likely right now. So Tails up to 150 gas. Probably got, it's got to be a Twilight, surely. What are we going to see? And what is SKS up to as well? Three Stalker build. There's the Twilight Council for Tails. Actually puts it inside there instead of at the back. And what's SKS going to do? He's up to 150. Where's that Twilight Council, SKS? Does he have another plan? Oh, he's building more stalkers. Alert. Interesting. In All right, Evacuate here comes the lava. And everyone's safe right now. So nothing to really worry about. Nobody should be dying from this. There it is. Twilight Council just a little bit later. So he elects to actually get three stalkers before the Twilight Council. Will that help him in any way? I don't think it will. The extra gateway is nice, but Tails can just build two more gateways and play catch up on that. So I don't think this build from SKS is going to help too much. It, I don't think he can apply any pressure with it. You know, by the time he gets across the map, the, I mean, there's already a Mothership call, so that doesn't do anything. He's safe right now, but Tails is going for a Robo as well. That is very interesting. It seems like he, he may want to... I think he knows what's coming, and I feel he wants to get the preemptive Immortal on it, honestly. That seems like the way to go. Tails, obviously, he hasn't seen the Twilight Council, but he can probably suspect it. It is a map for that kind of thing. SKS adding on another gateway. Morphs these through to warp gates. And can now warp in a couple more stalkers, which he does. Is he a bit late on that? Or did that really just finish? Yeah, warp gate actually did just finish, so that's cool. That's totally fine. 
And now Tails is going to be able to warp in three. So you see, like, the, the kind of stalker advantage that SKS has right here. It sounds great from a defensive standpoint, but right, it doesn't do anything for him at this point. And he delayed his blink. He, you can see the difference between the two. It's significant. If Tails goes in with... I, I don't know. The Mothership Core is up, so I think... SKS should be fine. He's still staying on one base. So as long as SKS doesn't get caught out in the open and lose Stalkers, he should be fine. It's, he'll be okay. But Tails already seems like he, he kind of knows where to go. Here is going to confirm, and then he'll probably build his Immortal. SKS is doing the same thing. Bit risky to put that Robo at the front, but also kind of good too, because it does mean the Immortal pops right into the fight. The problem is, the Immortal pops right into the fight, so it can be focused down very quickly. And also, it means the Robo can be picked off as well. Nice little pick off there by SKS, though. He manages to take that, that probe before a proxy pylon gets placed down, so that's good. Blink is done. Okay, so, so far, we've had a fairly passive game between these two. They're both gone Blink. They're both on one base. They're both on equal stalk accounts. There's an Observer out for Tails, which is... On this... Uh, it's actually kind of important to have that because as, as weird as it is like around here It doesn't really matter because this is all flat this ramp having that observer does mean that you can blink up there quite safely Which is good. You also know where your opponent's units are You can even do things like pick off the mothership core and that mothership core is full of energy Now does it do much? I, I'm actually kind of surprised it's at the front here because I think it's a bit vulnerable But it looks like SKS wants to expand so Tails is still on one base. Will Tails expand? He is building up quite a lot of minerals. He may decide to take his expansion. There's the probe. Okay, so he's going to expand. He realizes, okay, my opponent's doing the same thing as me. I, I've got to expand too. And strangely enough, as weird as that sounds, I think SKS is actually in a position where he should be fine. But he is a bit outnumbered. That's what I'm kind of worried about here. Like, he, he didn't continue building Stalkers. He wants to build an Immortal, and Tails... Tails has more units. I mean, straight up more units. Force Field goes down here. That's not hugely useful. The Time Warp's there as well. SKS is going to stop blinking out, but the aggressive blink forward, and Tails catches SKS off. I think SKS maybe gets a little bit too greedy. He's pulling back here, but SKS, of course, losing the Stalker War quite significantly. There is an Immortal out. This Mothership Core is gonna die! Oh no, SKS! Oh no, this is a disaster. Absolute disaster. He says, okay, I don't need to build more stalkers. I'm going to get an immortal. And Tails just keeps building stalkers. It turns out he, he... I think he was going for the expand and they just cancelled it after realizing what was happening. He says, screw it. He's getting out more units here. And SKS losing his mothership core. He does get the photon overcharge down, which is nice. And Tails did cancel. But it's... Oh man, it's... Four Stalkers, 13 Stalkers, four Zealots versus an Immortal of four Stalkers and a rapidly waning Photon Overcharge. Second Immortal is out. He he might hold, but if he does, he can, he'll be okay. Because he's got a pro count lead, he can get back into the game. But I do not believe that that is possible at this stage. I am very concerned. Very concerned. Tails going for it. And, you know, I said it before, that Robo's in a bad spot. It could get focused down. The shields are already going for it, and that is going to fall before the third Immortal comes out. That is awful for SKS. He's not rebuilt his Mothership Core. He is holding on for dear life, but he's up against 16 Blink Stalkers. He only has four of his own. He's got Zealots coming in here as well, and Tails is going for the killing blow at this point. SKS is probably not going to be able to hold on here. He'd have to get some incredible engagements. He's probably going to have to pull probes, at least pull probes here. I know he doesn't want to do it right now, but he's losing pylons. He can't reinforce now. And the gas is going to get taken out as well. SKS has got to pull probes and fight. It's the only way this is going to work. And I don't think it's going to work even then. He does have those immortals at the back, which is great, but he's not getting the fight off. Tails is able to keep his zealots at the front and defend. And slowly but surely, SKS is losing his base. I mean, hell, SKS even has less vision than his opponent here. And... This is looking brutal, I'm afraid. I don't think Startail is going to come out of this one alive. It would be a big surprise. Those Immortals would have to just be absolute heroes. They would really, really have to do their work. I've got to say, Tails is going to put their name to the test here. And I don't think SKS is going to be able to pass that. All right, the gas is being picked off. Here's the Blinks. The Immortals just not able to make it work. Tails got 22 Blink Stalkers here. It's, he's up against 10. And SKS is still managing to get units back on the field. I give him credit for that. But these Immortals have got to be absolute heroes, as we said. And Tails is just not going to let it happen. He is being too careful. He is refusing to commit right now. A Stalker did go down here, and that was a 
maybe a bit of a miss, Blink. Man, if SKS can come back from this, it will be incredible. I would have loved to see SKS build a mothership core to start building up energy for another fun and another challenge. But there it is. Tails just has overwhelming numbers here. One Immortal goes down. The probes have been pulled off the line here. And Tails should be able to micro against that without any problems at all. And SKS, unfortunately, is not up to the challenge. He makes a bit of a mistake. Maybe gets a little bit too greedy. And Tails just pounces on him. The one base blink remains supreme on this map. And SKS will lose the remaining stalkers. And he will lose this game, and Startail will lose the series, unfortunately, as MVP looking to take the win. Four games to two here, and an electrifying clan war to round off this month. There's the GG, and MVP will be your victors today. Really solid performance from both Billowy and Tails to wrap it up in an otherwise very equal clan war. Such a shame. I would have loved to see Hack come out again. And unfortunately, of course, Hack dropped his map against Keem, which I think a lot of people didn't really expect. So, Startel started off strong, but MVP, unfortunately, just a little bit too good. Just a little bit too good. Startel still struggling to really get good scores in this match, but, you know, they're still, they're still doing all right. You know, they took out Complexity yesterday without too much effort. They do lose to MVP. They took out Axiom earlier on, so... They're still doing all right. Uh, they're trucking forward with a fairly equal kind of ratio. MVP, on the other hand, is just like in domination mode at the moment. Smashing their way through opponents. They have lost. Don't get me wrong. They have lost before in the Clan Wars. That has happened. But right now, MVP is starting to take this seriously. And they are wrecking fools at this stage. I'll take out Startail. They took out Team Liquid earlier on. They're looking good. They are looking good. All right, folks. That is the last Clan War for the month. I'd like to thank every one of you for watching. You've been a fantastic audience as always. I hope you've enjoyed things. I really do. It's been great. Awesome series. Big thanks to MLG, of course, for sponsoring this event. $5,000 a month in prize money is the result of MLG's investment in this particular tournament.